Hey, so good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever time you're watching this, German students, and welcome to this video on, you guessed it, German conjugation. So in this video, we're actually going to take a three-pronged approach, um, contrary to like your English class. We're going to focus on a broader base. We're going to focus on German conjugation, German verbs, verb placement in senses, senses themselves, and then we're going to look at a couple funny examples of German words that have actually been kind of conjugated, more combined through the use of roots, which is something Germans are incredibly famous for in the German languages. So let's get cracking. So what is conjugation? Conjugation is essentially one of the basics of German. If you nail conjugation, you have about probably 75% of the language down. You can look up words on dictionaries. You can do whatever you want. But if you don't know how to conjugate, you can't form correct senses. You'll form senses, but they won't sound correct. They won't write correct. But if you're able to conjugate, then you're able to find any word in the German language and put it in a sentence and manipulate it in the way you want. So an incredibly important foundation of German. So the basis of conjugation is this. It's a lot like English, how we have roots. Roots for what? Roots for nouns. Well, in German, you kind of have these roots for verbs. And these are the green words found all the way in bottom. Now, I use three examples. Spiel, fall, and lauf. Spiel to play, fall to fall, lauf to run. So, on the very top, spielen, fallen, laufen, when you look this up on Dictat Leo, look this up, God forbid, on Google Translate, these are the words that will show the meaning. So, spielen, to play, fallen, to fall, laufen, to run. You don't look up the roots. That being said, if you say, ich spielen, um, volleyball mit meinen Freunden, you're incorrect. You can't just plop these words into sentences. That requires conjugation. And the way you do this is by cutting off the last two letters of the word and finding that root. So just as in English we have prefixes beforehand and suffixes afterward, and then you have the root, so too in German. So on that second row, we have gespielen and gelaufen. So to your right and your left. That's in the past perfect, a type of past tense. And in this past tense, you add the G-E prefix and the E-N suffix. But no matter what, the whole point of this slide, from the auf fallen to the gelaufen to the gespielen to the regular spielen fallen in lauf, and then to the roots, is just to identify those roots. Because once you identify that root and cut everything out, you can start conjugating. Once you get to the spiel and the fall and the lauf, once you determine that root, you can do whatever you want with that. And here's how that works. One, you can turn it into a noun. Now, obviously, these words are already nouns. You can't just willy-nilly turn these into nouns. But the whole point is, is that once you find that root, you can manipulate it, right? So spielen, to play, turns into der spieler or die spielerin. The player male or female, or in the context of like sports or whatnot. Notice, on my left are male, on my right are female. Also notice, all the nouns are capitalized. German's very interesting. Every noun is capitalized. I don't care if it's proper, if it's female, if you're talking about a dog or a toe or a tree, it's capitalized in German. That's how things work. But bowing. To farm turns into der Bauer, die Bauerin, the male and female farmer. And we're going to get to the umlauts over those A's, that two tiny dots. We got fahren, to drive or to ride. Der Fahrer, die Fahrerin, the driver, male or female, or the rider, male or female. Schwimmen, to swim, der Schwimmer, die Schwimmerin, the swimmer, male and female. Kuchen, to cook, der Kuch, die Kuchin. Again, we'll get to the umlauts afterward. The male or female cook and laufen to run. Der Laufer, die Lauferin. The male or female runner. So, we talked about that base. So, we 
found out Spiel is the base, Bowen is the base, Far is the base, Schwim is the base, S-C-H-W-I-M, cut out the M-E-N, Cook is the base. Again, we get rid of the last two. In the Bowen, we get out the first two because that's the B prefix and the E-N suffix. And then Lauf is the base for Laufen. Now, the important thing about these bases, and you'll see this in the second type, um, the Preteritum past tense. When you don't have these Gelaufen verbs like you do in this slide, you actually change the base. This is kind of what you do with Laufen. Notice there's always umlauts with those A's. That being said, it's not too big of a problem. If you screw up the base, at least you can conjugate it. The whole point is, it's going to be a lot easier once you're able to conjugate things to like work out other mistakes. That being said, it's maybe kind of nice to take note of some of these um, trends for changing bases. Because it's really a lot of arbitrary rules that once you figure out and get them in your head, they don't make complete sense. But hey, you can use them to communicate with other people, and that's what matters. So now we're moving on. What does this mean for us? Ich laufe auf dem Supermarkt. Ich gucke in die Kitchen. Ich spiele mit meinen Freunden und du fallen am die Treppe. I run to the, to the supermarket. I cook in the kitchen. I play with my friends. You fall on the stairs. Those are all wrong. Why? I mean, you got the subject right, you got the verb right, you got you got part of the verb right, you heck even got the preposition and the object of the preposition right, you got almost everything right, you got conjugation, you got everything right, nope, you didn't get conjugation. You didn't take, it should be ich laufe, ich gucke, ich spiele, du fuchst. We'll get to that, we'll get to the dreaded table of suffixes. But just because of that, you just throw out the baby with the bathwater. It's literally that simple. That one word and you screwed up the entire sentence. And that really stinks because you probably put a lot of effort into that. So we're going to make that quick change, sometimes even one word change, so you can figure out what to do, how not to end up in this scenario, and how to change this. So we can start out with, as I talked about, that table of suffixes. E-S-T-T-T-T-E-N-T-E-N-E-N. So, if you're in German 1, you've seen this. If you're in German 2, you've seen this like three times. If you're in German 3 or 4, you probably had this like pumped into your head too many times and more than you would wish. But it's important. So, you know how we talked about getting rid all the way back in the first slide, oops, of those last two and finding that root? Well, we can just add suffixes to them. So, these suffixes depend on the state of being. Is it I, ik? Is it do, you? Is it RCS, he, she, it? Now, these are informal. On the flip side, are they plural or formal? Wir, we, ihr, you, formal. Z, z, you, formal. Ear is more, you all. You, formal, or z as in them, plural. So, and we'll get to this with the next uh, slide, with the sentences. We're going to take that base, and we're just going to add these suffixes to the end. And that denotes what, one, what base I'm in. And we'll get to that with disease to figure out if it's she, if it's all of them, or if it's plural. And just for you to have that peace of mind knowing you got that sentence right. So let's go with these sentences. Ich laufe mit meinen Freunden. Turns into ich laufe mit meinen Freunden. Now, technically, what I did is I took out the EM and add an E. But really, it's just a one letter word change. That's how simple it is. Du fahren auf das Supermarket. Turns into du fahrst aus der Supermarket. Took that ST to replace the EN. Now, important, I changed the base. Here's a quick thing. If you go to Google and you turn into spell check, you can actually program it different languages. So I have a spell check for German. Helps a lot with bases. Once you get the conjugation down, 
you can start memorizing those bases and understand what's in there, then you're in a golden place. But until then, the spell check can help a lot. The fallen on the trepin turns into the fallen on the trepin. Now, why did I put that one in there? Because this shows the importance of conjugated verbs. Because with Z, I don't know if I'm talking about you or you plural or she. I don't know if I'm talking about multiple people or you formal and I'm like er or damin or I'm talking about she as in another person. But because of the E-N, I know it, I'm either talking about plural or a formal person. And because of that, and through context clues, I can nail that sense. This is how important this is to the German language. That simple, just two words. And we can already, with context clues, kind of determine what we're talking about. So in the next slide, yes, but wait, root words aren't for verbs only. We're going to take a silent detour. You know how I talked about how conjugating is kind of a very German thing. If you've ever been on a German forum and you're talking about the strengths of language and everybody brings up how freakishly long some German words are. Or how Germans just love to add words together to transmit in one word an idea what somebody speaking Spanish or French couldn't transmit in 20. This is how it works. So just like it's similar lines to how we find roots in nouns. Germans find roots in words. So, Hauptbahnhof. I don't know if you've heard this. If you're in level two, you've heard this with the Kohn Jugend, uh, Jugendlich, uh, the hostel project. Haupt, Main, Bahn, Train, like Zug, um, or Zug. Hof, Place or Court, Main Train Station. You just take those three different verbs, main, train, place, or center, and add them together. Hand, shoe, literally hand, shoe, means glove. Then my favorite, it's kind of a German mentality thing like uh, Schadenfreude, Zeitgeist, Zeit, time, Geist, mindset. So it's your place and sense of time. Very, very interesting thing for punctual people like Germans. But really, again, these are just words. They found the base. They just clinked them together and created this entire idea and this mentality that we are still talking about today, obviously, as evidenced by this video. So now we can get into the senses because, great, we know about these words, quick detour, um, but how can you use conjugation to make your senses better and essentially easier to read, right? Because conjugation, if it's not followed, is going to be confusing to a regular German uh, speaker or somebody learning German or just anybody <laughs> knowing German. So we start with verb placement. So at this point, we are assuming you conjugated verbs. So we're starting with the simple Ich bin ein Berliner. Uh, we aren't going to go into if he's talking, if he's a donut or a Berliner, it doesn't matter. Um, that green we see is the subject. It's I in this case. Second, er lauft mit seiner Freude. It's he. I'm Montag spiel ich Fußball mit meinen Freunden. It's I. Sieben Tage auf Schiss habe ich einen Termin mit meinen Arzt. It's I. That's the subject. Now notice the relationship between the blue, the verb, and the green, the subject. That blue never changes. So in the first two examples, it's always the second word. Now, if you notice, because these are getting more complex as we go on, I'm Montag Spielig Fußball mit mein Freunde. On Monday, I'm playing football with my friends. Now, my apologies, there should be an E after the minor, whatever. Um... Notice, spiel isn't the second word. No, but it's the second concept. Remember that a sense is an idea. And within a sense, especially when we throw in the uns and the coordinating conjunctions, we have multiple concepts that turn into one full-bodied, in-depth idea. 
So that's the point with these sentences. Simple ones. Ich bin ein Berliner. You have the ich, the subject, the bin, which is your verb, which in this case is a staying verb. Traditionally, you have four types of verbs. Verbs of placement, verbs of being, are one of those types. And those are going to be the ich bin, du bist, er, sie, es, ist, wir sind, ihr seid, sie, sie sind. That is why you memorize the poem, ich bin hier, du bist da, er ist in America, wir sind gross, ihr seid klein, sie, sie sind. You're finding the relationship between those verbs of being and that subject. Now, the rest of them aren't. Laufte to run, spiel to play, haba to have. The point is, and this was a longer way of saying it, got that first context, am Montag. Then the second, the verb. Then ich, the subject. Know this. No matter what place that verb is in, which is always going to be in second place, I'm putting that in quotations. It's an easy way to think of it. That subject can only be in first place or in third place. It has to be next to the verb. It has to be next to the verb. If you haven't gotten the trend, it has to be next to the verb. It just has to. Does it matter? Not necessarily. It just has to be next to the verb. So... There's something before. If there's um, in English, essentially the am Montag and the Sieben Tag Elfschess, we'll get to that. That's an independent clause. If that's beforehand, and remember, Germans don't really do commas. We'll get to when they do. Then, if that's in first place, the verb's in second, subject has to be in third. Now, Sieben Tag and Elfschess habe ich ein Termin mit mein Erst. We talked about the Sieben Tag Elfschess. Seven days from now, that's essentially your independent clause. I'm not going to put a comma there because Germans don't do commas there. They do the verb in second place. So seven days from now, have I, because the I always needs, the subject always needs to be next to the verb, ein Termin mit mein Erst, an appointment with my doctor. They don't have a word for doctor's appointments. They say appointment, Termin, mit mein Erst with my doctor. So great. We found the relationship between verbs and subjects. And if we were feeling complicated, we can throw in an independent clause along the way or an am montag. Now we can get even more complex because really we saw different types of senses here. So how about my three types of senses? Simple, compound, complex. My simple. Ich bin ein Berliner. We talked about that. Verb, subject, adjective. Boom. That's a sentence. That is a sentence. It gains points on the AP test. It works in a journal. You stated you're a, Berlin you're a Berliner. Good job. Great. Understand the idea. Now, you want to get a little bit more complex. Ich bin ein Berliner und ich komme aus München. I am a Berliner and... I come from Munich. So, past tense probably, I came from Munich, but I live in Berlin. That und, all those yellows are coordinating conjunctions. Now, if you know this, that und just connects two simple sentences. It just replaces a period so that it's just like in English and and connecting two sentences. No verb changing, no nothing. You're golden. Now, how about my complex? Now, this is obviously, as the name describes it, the most complex version. Ich bin ein Berliner, and here's where those commas come in. Got that simple sense. Will ich für wir sich Jahre in die Stadt wohnt. When I use will, because I have my simple, comma, will. Simple, comma, will. Then I have my subject. However, I take the verb and I kick it to the end. So because I, for 40 years, lived in the city. Because I, for 40 years, in the city lived. My bad. Everything that would originally go after in that un sentence 
all you have to do is kick that verb to the end and it kind of straddles that information. Now, aber and then are a little bit easier. Ich bin ein Berliner, comma, aber, according in conjunction, ich komme aus München. Another simple sentence, just with the aber there. Ich bin ein Berliner, comma, denn ich liebe die Stadt. Aber, but, I am a Berliner, but I come from Munich. I am a Berliner, then it's another way of saying because ich liebe die Stadt. I love the city. Sweet. So, as we see with all these two, those blues, those verbs are conjugated. Okay? Ich wohnt. Ich komme. Ich liebe. Ich komme. Ich bin. Ich bin. For the simple and compound as well. So, great. We've gone through conjunctions. We've gone through sentences. It's been a lot of information. But, guys, I hope... I really explained this as well as I could, but also show to you how simple this is. It's simple and it's easy and it's approachable. And once you get this, you are better off than you ever have been. And you're going to rock whatever you're doing next. So congratulations on ta taking German. Going to rock it. Going to love it. Um, hope you have a great rest of the day. And hey. If you have any feedback on the video, um, you know where to find me. See ya.